All right. The quality time with Schmick episode. Hell yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So I have I have this huge issue, right? I, I'm I'm pretty sure in every single podcast that we do, I'm like eating some shit or doing or like, you know what I mean? I'm eating something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right. But like, for the entire hour, uh, it's all it's gotten to the point where like I'm uncomfortable if I'm not. Yeah. Doing something. Yeah. Like. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm kind of that way too. I, uh, if I have to like go into detail with something, like like speaking wise, like I have to be like gesturing, like what I'm doing right now. Like I like to stand up, move around. Like like I explain better when I'm standing up and like walking around and just doing shit to like mm-hmm. get my point across. It it just helps me explain things better. So I get what you mean. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm just not confident enough in my ability to keep a train of thought. <laughs> Maybe. Sitting still. Yeah, sitting still, keeping a train of thought, keeping object permanence in my head. You know, the the usual. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like I don't know. Like like me like just sitting down and like yeah, yeah. I, see like if I, I like I always have to stand up and like move around to like explain shit like yeah I'm the same way I can't just be like secluded to one spot yeah uh you ever you ever just sit down with your own thoughts dude every day <laughs> every day <laughs> oh yeah every day <laughs> I I went through a phase where like I I um meditated for half an hour every day it was a uh, it was pretty cool i found out a lot about myself i also like um i took cold baths i sat in cold, cold water baths. yeah really uh, yeah for like up to half an hour at a time how do you do that you get used to it like uh th- for like the first week i'll ah ah you know but then it's just you breathe through it and it made me feel really cool because i could like conquer that that whole fear thing but now i'm i'm like i'm scared <laughs> so yeah, it's back to square yeah. one i guess oh well i mean once you keep like a repetition of something going for so long and then you stop i mean obviously like it kind of just leaves your leaves your mental and you kind of have to yeah I start from square one sometimes yeah. Yeah. but muscle memory also muscle memory it won't take long to snap that's, back into the rhythm that's cool yeah uh anyways so uh the what was the last thing you said uh muscle memory once you once you've done something like repetitious before and mm-hmm. then you stop for a while and then you start back up again uh, it won't take long to uh, pick back up what you were doing previously. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I was uh, doing a lot of aim training, I was taking it very seriously. And then, you know, I got a job and I started to take myself a lot more seriously. And then I stopped playing video games for a while. And then um, I just I just came back and I was, I was just good. That was it. Like, it... Um, from what I understand, like being able to, your hand eye coordination is a perishable skill, right? Yeah. But like, I don't know, I, I guess it didn't perish that much. So it's, it's just something I got now. Uh, uh, pertaining to video games? Yeah. I, I bet, I bet I could be good with a gun. Let's go, let's what? go to the range. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do that, John. Shot a gun before you? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. All right. That's uh, what he does. What Ken Reeves did for that movie was uh, some sort of competition, like speed shooting, mm-hmm. uh, taking down, well, hitting multiple targets in quick succession in a short amount of time. So that, I mean, that's you can do something like that. 
you can like invest in some like race guns that'll uh really you know make you fucking like John Wick. Yeah, I mean the thing that scares me though is like the the margin of error is really zero, you know? And I'm 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 more of an iterate kind of guy. <laughs> what what uh what, what error are you afraid is going to happen? I will shoot myself. How would you shoot yourself? Like taking the gun. No, I wouldn't have my finger on the trigger until uh, until I'm ready to shoot. But people do that though, right? It's happened. Yeah, no, there's a lot. I know there, there's even a popular video uh, out there that uh, this guy was pulling pulling his uh, his pistol out of his out of his waist, and as he's mm -hmm. pulling it out, he shot and it went right through his uh, not his uh, I guess his femur, but it did go through the the femoral artery. It just I guess it went through the fatty part of his leg, and he got majorly fucking lucky not to sever that artery with that with that round. But it's it's possible, but that's why it's you know practice, 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 practice. You know you get, and there's there's a certain amount of discipline and obviously training involved that will prevent you from having that happen to you. Ian, I've been shooting guns since I was like barely able to speak words you look like it <laughs> so, so, <sorry. laughs> yeah yeah i wonder <laughs> yeah but but uh, look if, if if i did it as you know a four and five year old i have no doubt in my mind that you could do it now obviously there's you know i i've been around it a lot longer i've been doing it a lot longer Mm -hmm. So it's not really much of a concern for me just because I've been doing it for so long. It's kind of like an unspoken thing in my mind. Like I just know to like not have my finger in the trigger guard unless I'm about to fucking get rid of something in front of me, you know? Yeah. So, but uh, honestly, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, that, that's something I've taken uh, seriously, like, that's the first thing I learned about guns, is don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to shoot, you know? Like, even, even like, taking pictures with the guns, I, I'm like, I, I have I have trigger discipline, you know? Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. always good. Like, I, I, I see people, like, holding their phones up to the cameras with their, their fingers in the trigger guard, I'm like, oh my god, that is so dumb. And loaded. And loaded too, yeah. Oh, I always, what? Always treat a gun like it's loaded, you know. That, that's yeah. that's that sounds pretty smart. I li I like that one. Oh. Yeah. No, yeah. it's 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 a it's a good thing to live by. I think uh, there'd be a lot of a lot of unneeded shootings happen because of such rules like that. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I, I feel like a. Gun training is the best gun safety. Like, if everyone knew how to use a gun, like, from a very young age, like, kids wouldn't be shooting each other in the face accidentally, you know? Like, I, I yeah. feel like that's just one of the saddest things to think about. I, I, I hate it. So tragic. Yeah, did you, you ever seen the, that video? This was on the news for a while of yes. uh, that, that little girl. Uh, the shooting instructor gave her a, I think it was a full, it was, it was, I know it was full auto. It was a full auto Mac 10 or a full auto. I remember that one. Yeah. I think it was a Mac 10 because she's holding it like this. And as soon as she squeezes a trigger, the thing flies up and it shoots the guy through the head. Yeah. The recoil was too much for that little girl. And it, 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 it flew up and shot him in the shot him in the head and um, killed him. He wasn't like following procedure from what I remember. Like he was um he yeah. wasn't in the right spot. No. That's yeah, that's tragic. I mean Well, first of all, who, who gives a 9-year-old, well, a 9-year-old girl Mac 10. a full auto Mac 10? I'd give a 9-year-old a shotgun. I had one. Yeah, yeah, uh, did it I, make you fly back? I, I was using one. No, it was a 20 gauge. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't too big. Yeah. Okay. But even then, like I didn't like the recoil of it cuz I was, you know, mind you when I was like nine, I was really small. Like I was like way smaller than I should have been. 
Like in seventh grade, I was four foot ten at like ninety pounds. Damn. Four foot ten, bro. So tiny. So uh, that was at that was at fourteen years old. So at nine years old, like Yeah. So yeah. I really wasn't a fan of the twenty gauge. It's not even a twelve gauge, it was a twenty gauge and but I still used it. Dude, it's so I mean, crazy. You got like parents and shit. Damn. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you have your mom, Ian. Um, mostly as as much as I could. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't talk about that. Um, uh, I I've been so I've I've had this uh infatuation with AI for the past week, right? Like you you know how I want to make it do uh make it grind out games for me. Um, that is. I, I'm still gonna try, but it's all gonna be a lot less feasible than I thought it would be. Like, um, tra making a, um, m making an AI play a game perfectly, like, uh, having the deep learning model train it perfectly, you have to be talking directly with the servers. So, um, all, all the AI sees is the numbers coming b between the server and the client. You know, like, um, if, if you have the AI. What I need to do, because I can't talk directly to the server through the AI, I'd have to have the AI see the screen and have AI vision and develop a model to identify things and then, um, and then have it know what to do from there, like actually tell it what to do. And um, because, uh, and it, what's, what's it called, a reinforcement model? is um like you give it points for doing the right thing you give it um like negative points for doing the wrong thing like but that's like millions of iterations you know like um <clears throat> sorry the open ai5 that's the the thing you were talking about where you're like ai plays video games perfectly open ai5 uh trained a, a deep learning model to play league of legends and um what they did uh was they had to talk directly to the server and it um it had 30 it was either 3500 or 250,000 years of experience i don't really remember the number i i'm going to say it's 3500 like and they and they crunched those numbers within 2 weeks right so like <laughs> First of all, I couldn't imagine being so so much of a degenerate that I played League of Legends for 3,500 years. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, like, they're gonna take that application and see where they can, where they can, you know, apply it in other places. But, like, they... Out of 15 matches, they won all of them to, against the best League of Legends players. It's crazy. And then, um... Wow. Yeah. An another thing I see, right, is... Do you know what Neuralink is? You heard of it? Neuralink. Like, uh, like, like shit in your head. Like, you, you can link shit through your head. Yeah, right? like, um, Elon Musk is, is, uh, doing this... Well, it's, it's been around for a while, even before Elon Musk, but, uh... They, they put, they implant a device in your head to read your neurons, and then they get the data from the neurons, and, um... It, Scientists are, are hoping that you can use that data to um, send to a computer to uh, move your arms and move your legs and help people walk again, you know. And uh, right now, what we're in the very early stages of having the brain talk to the computer, you know. Like, it, there, it's not back and forth. It's just, it's, it's one way. But if we had two ways, right, like... Uh, imagine like linking up with an AI and actually going through those iterations yourself, like having 3,500 years of field training before you go out into the battlefield, you know, like it, that'd be something you'd have to experience, but like fifth, fifth, well, that's, that's in a short amount of time too. Yeah. It's like that'd be, that take two, two weeks. Like, um, w with all these stories about, um, that we grew up with, uh, super soldiers and stuff, like Master Chief, um, Titanfall, like, I imagine them now that I know what I, that I, I see the way, th I see things the way I do now, um, they go into their simulations and they train for 
maybe what to them is um experiencing millions of years you know and that sounds so much more badass right because they're literally super soldiers gods in combat fighting other gods in combat that's that's like you ever you ever played black ops 3 before yes unfortunately the campaign yeah, a, yeah me too. a little uh you'd have you to know, explain had, so it's something it's actually exactly what you're talking about is it's an interface um it's it's well past the year like 2065 i think like 2070 um this guy ends up getting both of his arms ripped off and Black Ops 3, i don't yes. know if he gets both that. i don't know if he gets both i don't know if he gets both of his legs ripped off either but he, does. he ends up you know obviously he gets these yeah then he gets like these obviously these you know highly highly advanced you know prosthesis you know limbs and uh while he's i think while he was undergoing the surgery uh his train go boom. One of yeah train go boom guy uh interfaced with his consciousness and was showing him different like scenarios from like different world events mm -hmm. that had happened while he's a, while he's on like under uh uh anesthetic he's interfacing with him he's there in his mind talking to him with him uh showing him these things in different events and whatnot and and not to mention not only is he showing them he's also actively uh being a part of those world events like it's not going to change the history of that event it's just what could have been if certain things were to happen so like it's kind of like what if you know i was on the plane during 9 11 and I stopped it, you know, I could be in that simulation to stop that plane, but it didn't stop it in real life, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, that's the type of interfaces, like, what I'm getting out of what you're telling me about, you know, there's, you know, you're sending, we're at the early stages of just sending information to the computer, but not the computer sending anything back, you know, it's not a two-way street, it's only a, yeah, it's a one-way road. I can't so imagine. that's what the that reminded me of. Yeah, I, I can't imagine the kind of leap that we'd have to make to have it a two-way street. Like, that sounds really complicated. We'd have to, like, understand the brain and shit. Um, like, I, I, I imagine, like, um, combatants linking up, you know, uh, before they go out on a mission. And, and, uh, and they go, okay, run the simulation this way. Run the simulation this way. What if this happens? What if that happens? And then they're all documenting it and, and they're all running it and getting it pitch perfect to a T. Like you literally have enough time to think of everything. And then they just, I don't know. They just go in, dude. Like maybe not within our lifetimes. I don't know. I, well, yeah, I mean. In combat, you know, things are changing constantly. Yeah. There's not, like, there's a set directive, but, like, there's going to be a lot of variables that change throughout that course of just, say, that one battle, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so to run, to run through every scenario is very difficult to do. And like you said, that takes a lot of hours and more than likely days to weeks to like train for something like that to train for every possible outcome of said scenario but that's if you know the scenario you know what i'm saying like you can get intel on where they're at what they have and what they're more than likely going to use with what they have but you can't really prepare for how they're going to use it where they're going to use it mm. it's that's why it's such a variable because you just don't know but i mean that's why there's people with a lot more weight on their collar and a lot and get paid a lot more to figure that shit out so yeah they weighed out your morning shit and how that's going to affect the battle <laughs> exactly yeah. you know uh, right down to the most minute detail yeah it's yeah but i mean what i was talking about that's that was in 2065 2070 i highly fucking doubt that we would have anything anywhere close to that in that in in this lifetime I don't think I'll be around. I don't think any of us would be around to see anything like that. Yeah.
I mean, that's if the world doesn't go under. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, yeah. That's if, yeah. We don't blow each other up in a matter of a year. I mean, we've been we've been saying that shit for the past, um... Cold War started in the 50s? Right after World War Two. yeah. Yeah, so like 70, 80 years. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Um... I feel like that thing I talked about uh, in the last last podcast, like uh, the last generation of um, of people were were literally stupider because of uh, leaded gas. I feel like that sort of um, explains a lot. Uh, like we're, go I feel like we're gonna be a lot better than those people because we're smarter and because we're gonna learn how to use our um, advantages wisely eventually. I mean. When you say last generation, you mean like millennials? Last, not millennials. It was um, like sixties, eighties. That's a couple generations ago. Yeah. Well, they're the people that run like, run the world now, at least. That's my that's my dad's era. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was born in sixty one. Mm -hmm. Damn, dude. I don't know. Cause my dad's he's uh. My dad's one of the smartest people I know. There's nothing experience wise like that this guy just doesn't know. Obviously he doesn't know everything, but there's so much like knowledge that he carries that he's just so smart. Mm. And he and like he only has a GED. This guy's just literally like the, the like in, in a conversation in conversation wise I'm really good at conversating. I'm like, you even made the comment to me in the group chat of like how I can just, I can keep going on with the conversation, not make it, you know, whatever. And he makes me look like a child in a conversation. He will run circles around me in, in conversation. And as much as it pisses me off when he tells me that, like, it's true. Like, I know he can just cause he's, he's been around a lot longer. He's done a lot more than me. And he's just, he's just been through it. He knows, he knows the deal. He's just so, he's, he's up there in intelligence. He's not an idiot. I, 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 I can see where you're coming from on some of the shit that went on back then, just because of the cold war. Like there's a lot of, a lot of different shit. Like just for example, like, uh, Damn, what was that? It's the LSD project that the CIA was doing. Operation. What, were they like? Were know. they just dosing people with LSD? Is that what was going on? It was some sort of mind control thing that they were trying to figure out. Oh yeah, with, good luck. Uh, with the acid. Yeah, they they tried. So they would. I don't know if they. I would like to hope these people were volunteers and not just taken, but uh. But a lot of those people got fucked up because of the amount of LSD that they were giving these people. Some recovered, some didn't, some actually went like mad. Like they went insane. I can imagine. And never, and never like the same again. They're like borderline schizophrenic, just paranoid freakazoids, just living um, in a shadow for the rest of their lives. For about a year and a half after my, uh, that like bad mushroom trip, I, I sort of had yeah. like a um started developing this sort of a uh, Truman syndrome. You know, you ever watch that the Truman show? Yeah, yeah, like you're being watched. Yeah, like this is all a setup. You know, <laughs> like like a simulation. Not really. It was just um, I. It's it's really weird to explain. It's like oh, like. This is all a setup. Everyone's setting me up so they can tear me down, type of thing. Because that's that's sort of how I felt. And I don't know what something washed that away. I I don't know. I I think um might have been it might have been Coomer Brain. A what? Coomer Brain. Coomer Brain. What is that? Um, like uh. Ew, that's that that's that's a question what what is coomer brain um you know i i i sort of had um a problem with 
<clears throat> pornography gr growing up and uh, oh. it made me really um insecure you know like it, it i cultivated my brain in such a way that i was just really um i feel weak maybe yeah and i'm minded yeah and uh the the way i thought about things was very um skewed you know like i i didn't think i like oh no one likes me so i shouldn't even hang out with anyone i should just withdraw and stay by myself which you know isn't the truth people you know it's it's not it's not that serious you know um yeah as long as i give people my best self they they like to be around me but and if they don't then you know not my problem <laughs> but yeah yeah it's no skin off your ass right right uh I'm, I'm glad i'm out of that but um that goes into that in um do you know dr mangley oh yeah the angel of death angel of death yeah he he killed a lady with um uh, an, an overdose on dmt i believe i'm i have no clue if this is true yeah dr mangley killed a lady with an overdose on on dmt like i, I can't imagine the like absolute horrible adventure that she went through in her mind before she decided to uh um part ways obviously uh, i'm assuming she was a jew right yeah um yeah, yeah no, i'm guessing i can see the, the horrors that she saw like like it's it's really hard to explain like an acid trip on like what you feel what you see and like it's because it's really it's really more of a Acid's everything. not really a spiritual thing. It's, it, yeah, it's it's yeah. The really explain it's just everything. It's not really. That's why mushrooms is more of like the spiritual gig, and that's even hard to explain. You can't really explain psychedelics. It's just something you have to like experience if you're willing to experience it, you know. But like that's that's like dipping the toe into like that realm, while DMT just like full throttle shoves you straight into the fucking, you know shitstorm mm. and to be in that like think about it think about it auschwitz at that time was one of many death camps out there and you know the torture to see your family be taken and worked to death shot to death chewed up by dogs put in a oven like all these horrific things that you know that go on there and then now here's this person of very high rank taking you and experimenting with you with all this psychological drugs and not knowing what's happening and to just like w with all that going on out there with that resting in her knowledge like in her brain and then to go through that uh i think uh i think she would have rather have died yeah out of all the things i just listed than having to go through what she saw on dmt like that's that's pretty awful honestly there's a book there's actually a book called angel of death where it talks about the shit that joseph bengalay did with like jewish twins and all of his experiments that he did back in auschwitz like there's a whole lot of shit that he did so more than likely i'd believe it i think it would be true if he did if he did do that but that's a that's a horrific way to go yeah honestly like that's 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 awful. I, I like to think that she she found peace. You know, she went on an adventure and she found peace, and then she let go. Yeah. Um. I hope so. That's that's awful. Yeah, just a horrible horrible existence in general. Um. Do you know? I'm gonna segue into something. Uh, do you know the uh, um uh, the, the the laws of influence? Uh, lovers of influence. No, probably not. Sorry. Um, I don't think so, no. So I read this book called Influence, and there's a couple different laws of influence. Um, I, it's been a while. One of them is called... Um, a, authority Influence. Authority, Power of Influence. And um, uh, these people did this experiment where uh, they had... Um, they had someone as a as a te test sub two test subjects right one of them was strapped to a chair set um set to um like 
an electrical chair that you'd zap, and then the other one would be responsible for zapping. And then he'd zap them. Uh, the person in the chair would have to memorize a sequence of letters or numbers. Um, and if the person in the chair got it wrong, the person, um, the person zapping would have to zap them, right? Sorry, uh, I need... So, there's a scientist, right? <laughs> and, yeah. um, so the scientist and the person in the chair are working together. The only person that's the test subject is the person zapping. And then, um, so what, what, what they would do is, uh, they, the person in the chair would get it wrong. The scientist would say, zap them. And then this person would, like, scream in agony. Absolute agony. Like, it would make, it would make the test subject literally uncomfortable. <clears throat> But, like, the scientist, as the, the authority figure, was egging them on. <laughs> Not egging them on, just, like, you know, giving the commands. Um, and uh, they'd increase the intensity up until the point where the test subject actually believed that they were killed. They, were, they killed the person. <laughs> like, they'd go that far. And uh, they, they sort of switched it up, you know, like maybe two scientists that were arguing on whether or not they, they should uh, zap. Maybe it was j another person posing as a test subject, you know, like, but like what they found was that people will listen to authority um, regardless of what they think about the situation. You know? And I feel like that's sort of how the Nazi death camps happened. Like, just the, this whole Nazi thing, like, is literally just the authority power of influence. Um, probably a couple more, but, yeah. Well, these are regular run-of-the-mill people. Uh -huh. not, I mean, not the Nazis. Not the Nazis. Uh, talk about the Jews. No, they were regular um, people. Everyone was... Well, sure. Some, some, some of them... Some of them... Well, the Nazis were their own separate... Like, they were still a part of, like, the German army, Third Reich, and all that, you know, wonderful jazz... Um, but they were separate from regular German troops. Like there was German like troops, and then there was the SS. Like there was there was the Nazis. Like there's there is a distinct difference between German soldiers and Nazi soldiers. There's, you know, to be uh, you know, to be a Nazi, you ha you have to have uh, absolute loyalty, mm -hmm. one hundred percent loyalty to uh, Hitler. Like regardless of what he was doing, like he could be, you know, setting kids on fire or whatever, and you would still have to, you know, have that absolute one hundred percent dead loyalty to Hitler, or otherwise, you know, you'd be killed, if not your family and Dude, the guy was on else. meth or something. It was crazy. It's a crazy situation, and for the for the Jews, you know, when an army just starts strolling into your town and you know making these announcements of you know all the Jews we're going to have a new Jewish country for you uh we're going to move you out of here you don't you, you're going to have your own country again blah 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 because cuz uh Israel was not a thing Israel was not a country during World War 2 Israel hasn't wasn't even on the map for a very very long time. I, I I would say within like maybe over a thousand years, like Israel was not on the map. It was just owned by like I think Libya and a couple other Middle Eastern countries. So for them, I don't know, blindly listening to oh we're gonna get a new country blah 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 we're gonna get moved out of here and you know they start rounding up all these Jews and eventually you know the mistreatment misconduct and all this stuff started happening to them and then. You know, once they started getting rounded up, thinking that they were going to go to uh, a new Jewish country, you know, they ended up at these camps. Or, or, if they even you know, made like it. in, uh, yeah, yeah, if they even made it out of there. Like, I'm getting to that too. Um, like, for one example, there's this place, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it looks like Krakow. It's in Poland. Krakow was absolutely liquidated. The whole city was liquidated after, like, they were still uh, transporting Jews out of Krakow, but after a certain point during World War II, like I think it was like around 1940 or 41, uh, Krakow was completely liquidated. Like they exterminated the entire city. Damn, dude. So there was at, at a certain point to where like they just they didn't 
say you're going to get a new Jewish country. It's more of just getting rid of them in general. Because Hitler blamed the Jews for uh, the Germans' failure in World War One, and up until then, their economy being crashed, and you know, he put the blame on them. So there, it, eventually, there was no more. We're going to move you out. It's more of uh, genocide. Mm-hmm. In, in retrospect, it, it, it was it was going to be genocide from you know from the get go. It was just lies that they just kept feeding the Jews and so once once they set that stone once they set that power in you know even now like like if let's just say fucking Russia rolled up to Las Vegas right now and started storming the city I mean there's going to be some retaliation of some sort because I mean every American there's a lot of American homes that have firearms in them so I mean, there oh, would yeah. be fighting back, but not at a military level scale, you know. I feel like it'd be the same thing as Ukraine. It's more of a power struggle. Yeah. Like, well, just take, 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 like, take the United States military and just take them out of the picture for a second. The Jewish people didn't have a military because they were just scattered all around Europe. There was, you know, the Germany. They had no one fighting um, for them. Like they. Well, yeah, the, the, it was, they didn't know what to they, expect. They had no country. Yeah, they had no country. They had they had nothing. It was it was just them scattered around Europe. So there was nothing. There was no one to defend them. So take the U.S. military out of this situation, and let's just say, if you're a local in Las Vegas, we're gonna move you to a new area, to start your own city again. See where I'm leading with this? Mm-hmm. And then that's when the extermination starts of you know every Las Vegas local in the city, eventually to the city being liquidated itself. So there's no, there's nothing we could do because we have no military. We have no sort of like any, like we have no power. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the firepower and we don't have any sort of tacticianers to combat such, you know, power like that. So the authority, like it's, it's more of, uh, not cooperation. It's more of, it was forced. So I like your whole thing on like the authority thing, like yes and no at the same time, just because those guys didn't have a choice. So like if let now now let's put the U.S. military into the situation. You know now we don't there that that authority that they're trying to put over us isn't going to be a thing because now we have people combating to save those you know the locals of Las Vegas together. So we would move out temporarily while our people the united states military would combat the russian military so in a sense of you know did they have a choice no they didn't have a choice so that they kind of just had to you know like a lion to the lamb they 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 kind of just had to take it yeah i i feel like um i feel like people nowadays like the the chance of insurgency is so much higher just because of the information that we have now like the the power that we have now, um, yeah, like you, the the shit that the Nazis pulled, like you couldn't do that. No, it's just, it's just like someone tweets like, "Hey, yo, Nazis coming to Poland." It's their fucking like they got like tanks and shit, and then they they're already lined up, you know, like yeah, um, just like I was like at France, um, what what was the what was the Blitzkrieg? <laughs> like they were going through the Ardennes forest or something. It's like uh yeah like at france like uh i just saw a really huge battalion of soldiers uh moving through my backyard uh, watch out boom not even a thing you know intel yeah. intel oh yeah cyber uh cyber like 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 i said like cyber cyber warfare cyber security and all that yeah. stuff that's a big big thing nowadays it's just like if you want to shut somebody down you shut off their power grid. What happens when you don't have power? You don't have heating. You don't have cooling. Like that's that is like that goes for a huge radius because there's no refrigeration. You run out of food. Now you don't have any good food to eat. And now most of your vegetables are gonna go. We live in a desert. Where are you gonna grow food at? It's gonna be really hard to find places to, you know, start 
farming that when the grid is shut down because now there's no more refrigeration, there's no more food, and now Vegas is running out of fucking water. So now we're running out of water. Where are we going to get water from? You see, you start cutting off, you start cutting off uh, resources. You can starve a nation to death, and you can well, well. Let me rephrase that. You can starve a nation into submission. Yeah, is what I'm getting at. You cut. You start cutting off resources. They can't fight back. You can't. You can't fight back if you don't have resources. Uh, there's you know this. There, there's this thing that I've been thinking about since Russia invaded. It's that um. Uh, hold on. Um. Economy and culture are more powerful than the sword. You know? Yeah. It's, yep. That's crazy. Um, yeah, that shit with Russia? Fuck Russia, dude. That's yeah, that was... Uh, man. Uh, I don't know what Putin's up to, but... Well, we know what he's up to. He uh, he bombed a theater full of kids. Really? Like, And he knew about it, too. Like, he... Like, they, they, he was told that there was children in that theater and he's like, okay. And mm-hmm. he still sent, he still, he still bombed the fuck out of that, out of that theater. Anyway, all of them are dead. All those children are dead. There's no survivors. Not, and then not too long after that, uh, he started machine gunning children. Again, again, the same thing with children, like he's machine gunning down children. Like at, at, at what point are we going to put our foot down and say, you know, enough is enough. Ukraine doesn't want our help. They don't want our help at all. They're kind of giving us the finger. So it's like, okay, you can deal with Russia. If you don't want, if you, but as soon as they start moving into other countries, like into NATO territory, that's when, you know, the world's going to go up into arms. I mean, we're already, there's already a couple thousand Marines in the surrounding countries of Ukraine right now on standby. Yeah. And you're not one of them. We're waiting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not one of them. Uh, sadly, I'm not one of them. But is that what you're doing? You're just waiting. You're waiting to to go out there. We're we're, we're all on standby. We're all, really because the commandant of the Marine Corps, which is like the dude in charge of the entire United States Marine Corps branch itself, uh-huh. came down to my area and talked to uh, some of my one one of my sergeants and a couple other people. They asked questions. And blah blah blah. And, uh, some some information was relayed to us. Um, is it, a big is it one was uh, well I, I, I think it's more of need to know than it is like yeah. uh, than it is of uh, in terms of uh, I can't think of the fucking word I can't think of it but <laughs> yeah no it's not it's more comprehensive of sure uh, yeah. there's another word for it. I can't think of it. it's, it's, it's has to do with, you know, top secret classified yeah. and all that stuff. I can't think I of the word you. right now, but yeah, but w- one of the main things they all got out of that was, uh, stand by because, mm-hmm. you know, we're more than likely going to be, uh, we're going to war. Yeah. We are going to go to war. So. Who knows? Your boy might be in Europe. Damn. Are we still going to do a lemon hour? Going to be in the trenches? <laughs> yeah, I can't have my phone out in the field, so you, you, y'all won't hear from me. Damn. going to send letters. At least not for a while. We're going we're gonna to read Mike's letters in the lemon hour. Yeah. Yeah, you read a letter. Be like, dude, I just fucking teabagged this Russian bitch I just, <laughs> I just shot in the face. I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I, I teabagged this rescue that I pulled out of a tank. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know. It's either there or, uh. Gonna be with China. Yeah. I feel like China's not really a big thing. They, they like their economy, you know? Like. Well. As much as they they're kinda, fucking it up, but. Yeah. They they kind of shit a brick after they saw Russia get their asses handed them or continuing to get their asses hand, handed to them by the Ukrainians. So they kind of like they're like, oh shit, Russia is just completely underprepared as fuck, and they just kind of like 
started taking it more easy on Taiwan for now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they're kind of biding like, their time. Yeah, until something happens. I don't know. I, if Because half of Russia's military is back in country, and then the other half is stuck in Ukraine. So yeah, Stuck or what? Like, they're stuck. They're, like, they're stuck in Ukraine. Damn. Fuck. Like, like well, they, I mean... They have no gas. Shit. That's they crazy. Be, if, they left, if they left, <laughs> they would be leaving. They would be leaving all of their shit there. Well, I mean, we did it. <laughs> right? That is, you know... <laughs> yeah, we did, but that's at the fault of our own... I, you know, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay, okay. Um, I don't want to talk about that. Um, but yeah, you're right, we did. We left a lot. We spent, I think... I was either eight or eighty billion dollars to train the Afghan army to combat uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda, and I was smoke weed and shoot at rocks. And they just fucking they surrendered. They surrendered all of our stuff. Now they have they have our weapons, they have our technology, they have our Humvees, they have some of our helicopters. Like it's like they have so many American weapons now. And now like they, ISIS has their own like. Special forces, mm -hmm. which I thought was funny. I was like, okay, whatever. That's yeah. But I mean, look, if if one raghead in sandals can take out one or two marines, that's an issue, right? That's 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 an issue. But now that they have our shit and night vision stuff too, like it's. I, I feel like there was just a really big insurgency problem. Like, that was the issue. It's like, we kept fucking with their shit in, in ways that they didn't like. And then ten years later, some kid grows up to carry a gun. You know? I don't know. Well, the only reason we're over there is to prevent another 9-11. Oh. Because if we just let them, if, if we let them run rampant and start taking, you know, place after place after place eventually they'll get their hands on let's just say another plane and you know not only will they get their hands on a plane they might just add some explosives to the plane to make you know some more fun time for them so we might have something worse than another 9-11 uh, which pray to god we don't have that happen again I, I feel like we we were just good being on the defense you know like we we started this whole bullshit with TSA, but uh, you know, if it wasn't there, then I feel like it would have happened again. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, the, the the most um, the blow that lands the hardest is unforeseen. You know, so we kind of we kind of got that memo. So, right. Yeah, but we're not there no more. We're not in the sandbox. Nobody's in, over there no more. Mm hmm. That's why, yeah. you know, there's there's no American troops. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's still some that are... Because, you know, we abandoned a bunch of Americans over there, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, we did? Over yeah, in Kabul. Oh, there's poor an guys. ass load of Americans that got left behind. What are they, what did, what did they do? Are they just prisoners? They didn't go back. No one went back to go get them. No one went to go back to fucking get them. Jesus. That's terrifying. See, this is why, like... Like on like, since this is airing, I can't really like I, like I told you I can't really talk about it just because I would get in trouble. But you can thank a certain someone for letting that happen to leave all those Americans behind. Yeah, so, I mean someone it's had a, to do it, but not like that, you know. Well, yeah, you left our you left our our gear, and you left Americans behind. I'm not so butthurt about the gear. I'm more I'm more butthurt about the people that got left behind. Our people, our blood is stuck there. Yeah. Like a year ago. I think it was like two years ago or something like that. Hey, do you ever get like a superior come into your room and, and then and then you have to like stand at attention or some shit? No. No? No. Okay. No. That's crazy. But like if if, if would he have to if it was serious enough? Like he'd come in and be like, pack your shit. That's it. What do you mean, pack my shit? Like, yeah, like, like he would he come into your room to tell you that you're going to war? Or would you have to like everyone go to no, assembly or something? Yeah, yeah, it'd be like a big. It'll be like a big group thing. 
Yeah. I'd feel kind of special if he came to my room and told me, hey. Like a movie thing. to go fight. Yeah, that'd be cool. But like, no, it's, 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 it's a big old group thing that they tell you. They get everybody that's going to be going and then, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, you got a really nice outfit there. <laughs> How long did it take you to roll up those sleeves? Uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, like 10 minutes. Doesn't take long. This sleeve is kind of <laughs> janky. This sleeve's kind of janky, but I don't see this it. Sleeve's pretty good. Yeah. Well, from someone else, it takes me to roll up my sleeve. Two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. Uh, I'm losing steam. <clears throat> AI. Uh, how you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, man. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of just vibing over here. It's not much. There's really not much for me to do besides just ET and eat. That's about it. Air that chiseled chin for me. Yeah. Well, I haven't shaved. I'm supposed to. I get in trouble if somebody caught me without a shave. Oh damn! Really? Yeah. No, it's <laughs> yep. like a it's like a thing. Like you will get your shit like blasted if you don't fucking shave. That's it. <laughs> military requirement that's really weird because literally every other military lets you grow out a beard right yep yeah or like, over here baby face as, as, as all those 80s politics again <laughs> and i feel well, like I mean, that unless, it unless was special forces unless you're special forces unless you're special you know for- if you're special forces you can have a beard and like tattoos and look like a regular human being but the whole point of special forces is to not look like you're in special forces you can't have t- you can't have tattoos well you can well they changed the tattoo policy uh and it, it it recently changed to where you know if you had a tattoo on your arm it had to cover like your hand had to cover all of it like if your hand can cover it like it's within regs and prior <laughs> to that uh it couldn't be passed, uh, so like it couldn't be passed down here. So like you could have like a quarter sleeve, but it couldn't pass down here. Mm. Then they changed it to the hand thing, and now they just changed it again to where now you can actually have sleeves and shit. Mm. But I think that's more of like a recruiting thing. Yeah, to get I, more I feel people that. in. I mean, uh, so... obviously, nothing on the neck and the face. That's still a fuck no. Yeah, it's on. It's, it's up there with the beards. Um, <laughs> yeah, literally. Fuck. Um. Uh, so if you if you got a tattoo that's not within regulation right now, you just get you know, um, discharged. No. Or, or would they laser it off? They would cut it off. No, that, uh, I'd get in trouble. No, I, I can get a tattoo. Mm-hmm. I can so, as long as I'm within the re- regulation. So like, if I just got a whole sleeve done. Uh, it, it well for the sleeve it can't it can't pass here can't be on your hands and shit um so I can get a whole sleeve done and it'd still be in regs like there's some schools that will tell you like you're not allowed to get tattoos yeah just because like that's certain like school and chain of command and whatever but yeah you can, no you can you can get a tattoo you can get but tattoos and shit are there regulations on the content of the tattoos. Yes. Ah. Yeah, there is. Like, well, what, what did you have in mind? Because I know, I know. No. No, you could get boobies. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Absolutely not. Damn. Yeah, it can't be racist, uh, gang affiliated, or uh, promiscuous. <laughs> yeah. You, you ever, you ever meet any clan boys in the Marines, Mike? No, but I've met a couple racists though. Yeah, they're not white people either. Like, um, well, actually, one, but he was like still kind of bona fide, and I really didn't like him that much. That just kind of put icing on the cake for me to like really not like him to begin with. But there's this guy I went to boot camp with. Uh, his name is Rueda. Uh, one of the shooting instructors called him Rodeo, and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, he uh, he even he admitted to me at first. Uh, he's like, you know, Arnold, like, 
I really didn't like you at first. I like, I really didn't, I hated you. And I was like, damn. All right. <laughs> I was like, thanks for telling me. Straight I up, straight it. up. And he was like, well, like, I mean, obviously I do now, but it's like from where I grew up, like, because he, he grew up in uh, Chicago and, uh, he was just, he just grew up. I would, I don't want to misconstrue, misconstrue his words, but I, I, I'm going to paraphrase the best I can. It's like, he was just, taught to not like white people yeah I white feel people that. just like like the stereotype like annoying white person like or whatever just he didn't like white people and then he joined the marine corps and he met me uh, i think he said uh, he was like i was one of the first like white dudes that you know that he like thought was pretty cool that I mean, he liked you, you, and that he, he i mean obviously i know i am like i'm, I'm a pretty laid-back person but uh it the Marine Corps really changed his, his, uh, his thought process, you know, like we all wear the same color. We all bleed the same blood. We all bleed green, you know, like it's, there is no black, white, yellow or anything like that. It's just Marines. But what was that movie where, um, the, the football players were integrating, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Was it football or are you talking about baseball? No, it was football players and they were like, um, it, this was in a segregation era and then uh, they integrated blacks into white schools and then, um, oh my God. Uh, I'm is, not it gonna... Den is it with Denzel? Denzel Washington? Yes, I think so. Yes. I think I know, I think I know what you're talking about. Anyways, so you did one of those, yeah. huh? Yeah. I guess so. I'll, I'll, inadvertently, I didn't like. I had no idea he didn't like me because I was white. Like I just, I was like, all right, appreciate that. Yeah, who was your Denzel? <laughs> Nobody. I never. That wasn't. It wasn't that much <laughs> of an issue. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dad. My dad would be my Denzel. Yeah, it's like. Even even growing up in the sixties and seventies, yeah, he was he was my he was my dad as well. I, I get why people are racist, you know. I don't like taxi drivers. Why? Because they're Indian? No, it's because um, that's just my my thought about taxis. I fucking hate them, and I want to drive them off the road, no matter what they do. Because they're always just really not rude, but sometimes they're not. But I don't oh. care. And that's, that's, you know, that's a problem that I have to deal with, like, by myself. But, you know. On, uh, that's, that's on your side of town, right? Yeah. You don't get taxi yeah, no, drivers right. uh, up north. No, it's too bougie up there. It's all, it's all Lyft and Uber and whatnot. <clears throat> Speaking of, my, um, have I told you about my sister's boyfriend? No, you haven't. No? Oh my god, this no. guy is fucking, like, he's bougie. He's, like, Mr. Clean, Johnny Sins, fucking, um, wow. he, he's worth a lot of money. And, um, he used to stay in this place called the Waldorf Astoria. And, uh, it's a really fancy hotel. Um, and, uh, he had this, like, five million dollar penthouse that like his boss lent to him to to like work in as an office you know wow um but he he lives in a different uh really expensive neighborhood uh it's, it's got lakes and ducks and golf courses so you know it, it's like it's a neighborhood oh i think i might know where you're talking about too yeah i think you know let me pull, let me pull up the map real quick because i think i know exactly where you're talking I, I can think of maybe two places it's not rose ranch no, no. Um, it would be uh... oh my goodness. Would it be Spanish trails? Yes. Yes, Is that's Spanish exactly trails? it. Yep. <clears throat> I don't want to dox yep, my I've sister. Been I've been in there before. 
Yeah, um, it's great. Dude, nice. on the like on the drive in, we went through the whole like gate with the security guard, and then and on the drive in, I saw this old guy speed walking with his fucking German Shepherd, and he had a turtleneck. You know, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is a spot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and my sister's backyard is like, it's just a patio, and it's and it opens up to this man-made lake. As like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, but that's it. Yeah, dude, I'm, her place is. Look, man, I, I I come from being poor. Like I know what being you poor me is both, like. Buddy. I am poor. That shit is. Uh, I mean, shit, I'm poor now. See where I'm living at? Uh, no. Freaking David. You're in a a different um category. Oh no, I'm, this is this is pretty ghetto. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, text David. Tell him to fucking hop in the hop in the podcast because okay. he was asleep. Damn. Yeah, I was. I wanted to. Um. What, what do you think? Another another like half hour. I, I want to kind of like diversify the content and then maybe like play games with David for a couple hours. Have Herm edit edit it together. Like that'd be pretty fun. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, we had a fucking... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, come on. David. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you missed... You missed the most, like... Ian and I have been having the most fire conversation. Yeah. Well, it figures that I'd be asleep for the best one, too. <laughs> yeah, as T- TLH seventeen, uh, quality time with uh, Schmick and Ian. Shmi- the Schmian, the Schmian hour. It was the Schmian oh. hour? Yeah, that was a whole hour. Am I in at the very end? Um, it's an hour and two right now. Maybe like we can go another half hour. <laughs> I w- I wanted to um uh, I was I was just talking to Mike about how I I want to like play games with you for a couple hours and then have Herm edit it together and then we could post that on here. That would be sick, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that would be kind of dope. And then... Depends on what game we play, though. It can't be, I can't play Overwatch for more than a couple of hours of Overwatch will fry all my brain cells. <laughs> Dude, um... What is Destiny? What else can we... <laughs> I, I, I can't... I can't, re- I can't record, um... I can't record Warzone not with um, not with my graphics card. Like um, Apex would be pretty popular. That would dr- that pretty would drive boring. people in. Pretty boring. No, I don't know. I don't even fucking watch it. But like, it's popular. You know? It would it would drive people in. But I'm horrible at it. So. <laughs> Me too. We gotta put. And I can't tell you about the shit we I talked about, true. dude. Um, <clears throat> David, tell a joke. What did the monkey say to the banana? Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> he got it! He got it! <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the banana said, No! No! <laughs> oh, oh, please! No! <laughs> no! Yeah. Oh. Exactly. No, exactly. You got it. Oh. Anyways, good morning, David. How was your nap? It was pretty fire, dude. Yeah. It was real fire, actually. I was I was having some coffee brain fog. I was just sitting there. I was like, I was like, oh. I could drink another coffee, get started on the yard work, or I could just take a nap. So I took a nap. <laughs> Damn, Sigma. Fucking, <laughs> you didn't get started on the yard work. No. Uh-uh. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed, David. <laughs> Well, that's okay, because now I can start on it. And I'll have, like, it. a renewed sense of energy. Shit. You know? Yeah. Mike, dude, Shit. like... <laughs> you're, are, yes. you're, you're, still, you're still single, right? Uh, yes, sir. Literally how? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, like, no cap, I'm sorry, you are just adjusting your angle there, and I was just, like, staring you down, and I was like, bro... How is this man so pretty and oh not God. tough? Like, yeah, right? so... 
<laughs> like not to rub it in because I know how it be for single kings, but like, like dog, you're just so like like mmm, oh, buttery, Fuck. buttery smooth face. Oh my gosh, dude, can't. Dude, like Mikey's in in a high school. He pulled all the fucking girls, dude. Like he, <laughs> he's he's the guy. Like like all the, the girls. Guy. <clears throat> all the girls would show up to the first. <laughs> All the girls would show up to the first day of school, and then they'd look around, and then they'd look at Mike. Like, I want to fuck that one, you know. That one. That All the guys would show up to school. Like they'd look around. I want to fuck that one, and that was Mike. That guy, girl, <laughs> uh, other stuff. It's all you, other, Mike. Other other stuff. You are you uh. are the conquest. You are the you were the conquest of the year, Mike. I am the mountain that people want to climb. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's sad to say, like the beginning of my senior year, that kind of happened. There's just one Damn. girl it's in my. Uh, yeah, this happened at the beginning of my senior year. Okay, uh, all right. It was like early, early senior year. Uh, it was in my um, manufacturing tech class. Um. It was my third year. It's my third year in there. I'm I'm pretty seasoned into this class. And there's this girl in there and uh I think she was no, she was a junior. She just become a junior. Um Were you, was she this senior got year? My, yeah, this was my senior year, her junior year. And uh she fucking got my number somehow. And she was like, hey, this is so-and-so from uh, Manufacturing Tech. And I was like... A little creepy. Oh, I was like, hey, hey, what's up? I was like, how'd you get my number and, and whatnot? And it, was, it wasn't like no casual, like, like, hold on, let me rephrase that. This wasn't anything creepy or anything uh -huh. at first, like, because at first she, she like, needed help with, with uh, SolidWorks going on, like, trying to figure out you the dimensions works? for... Uh, yeah. God. Okay, continue. And because she needed help trying to get these dimensions on whatever the hell we were working on, I was like, "Yeah, I, I can help you out," and blah blah blah. And then eventually we got to talking a little bit. Like I honestly didn't think of anything of it. I was just like coming out of like my horror phase. Like I really didn't. No, you weren't. You never really came didn't out care. of it. <laughs> Even when I got a girlfriend at the time, oh. I never do it. I just never left my horror phase. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you could just be a whore for one person. Sure. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I uh, no, I, I don't know. We started we, we started talking a bit in class, and then started texting more, and then I don't know. She started getting flirty, like over the phone, and she was definitely new to she was definitely new to a certain situation like this. I don't think she's ever. I definitely, I don't know what I am, but I definitely just me being in like her presence just pulled her out of her comfort zone. Like I made her from an introvert to an extrovert because she just like came on so strong. I was like, I was like you've hey, you never done this before. I was like, you've never done this before, have you? She was like, what do you mean? She was like, I was like flirting. She was like, no, not really. And I'm like, yeah, I can tell. I, I just. It's like really oh, obvious that you're God. you're trying to like get at me. Like I gave zero fucks. I was just being so straight up. I was just like, it's like she's definitely just trying to flirt with me right now. She's not very good at it. And I just told her straight up. Oh, and then man. you know, one thing led to another. She was like, "Do you want to fuck?" And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sure." Hit. That's and it. Then she was like, she "I pulled, guess the this questions." Is what, like, I guess like, the question's the Well, okay, so here's the thing, like I did it because this is what kinda like so we met up and like we were hanging out, we're talking, like just doing our you know, thing like we used to and then uh I don't know, like you know, obviously like start to like kissing and then like touchy feely, like you know, like going through all the bases, you know what I'm saying? Um and then she, uh, so, 
I really don't want to get too gross about this. You know, once I, you know, I put my hand in her pants, right? Like, she, like, she, like, leans into my fucking... <laughs> she, she, like, whispers in my ear. She's like, I want you to take my virginity. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, no. Uh, that's, like, my hand sucked out of her pants so quick. And I was like, yeah. <clears throat> no. You just you just whip out your carton of eggs and just start throwing them at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I was just like, I was like, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> she kind of got upset. She kind of got upset with me. She was like, Why not? Blah blah blah. Like, she's like I feel so weird now. Blah blah. blah. I was like, Don't feel weird. Like, I just like, I don't want to be the one to take that. Like, yeah, that's it's gotta special. be with someone that like, she's gonna like stay with. And it, you like, know. <laughs> I was like, this, you gotta save that for someone special. Don't waste yeah. that on me. Like, <laughs> like I get it. Like, uh, you're such a Chad, Mike. Like, for d just making that decision. Dude, you're, you're, you're a fucking Sigma male, Giga Chad. Like, damn, dude. We, we just, alright, like, note for Herm. We just draw, like, Mike, but in, like, a royal robe and, like, <laughs> like a bejeweled <laughs> crown. Yeah. Like the royal <laughs> felt, <laughs> you yeah, know, dude. with the with the cape and the throne. <laughs> My, Mike really just like Mike. halt. Bad decision. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. You have violated the law. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of felt hey, bad. I don't want to do that. Want to do that, sir? Yeah, because we all know women are women are a lot more vulnerable than men. Dude, I would have. I would have been just. Hmm you know, so narrow minded and 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 uh railed her. Yeah, dude. Got I, into I like know. a whole two year debacle with her. <laughs> yeah, and got into yeah. <laughs> Only for it to crash and burn horribly at the end with both of you just dealing with heart heartbreak for the next year or two. And then finally like pretending you're over it and then not being over it and then like six more months go by and then you're like, okay. That will wait, wait, wave two of this is coming on. Uh oh, and then you're dealing with another, another line of problems for another six months, and then you're just like, okay, now I'm finally over it because you find for yourself a new life, and then things are normal for eight months, and then two months later it comes on again, and then you're like, frick, I thought I was over this. Oh! And then you're dealing with that for another three months, and now three years have gone by. And then you're just like, oh. oh, and then you drink coffee and listen to the birds sing. Whew. And then maybe you've gotten past it, but there's just that remnant of pain that still stings your conscience from time to time. Oh. Good move, Mike. Good move. <laughs> Why do I feel like this was, that was oddly specific? <laughs> What? No, not at all, dude. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought you were adding Ian at first. Like, I thought you just at Ian. Yeah, me too. As you just kept going, Ian started laughing, and I was like, "Oh no, he's talking about himself." <laughs> I was like, dude. "Holy shit!" <laughs> I feel like there's this. No, um, dude. I feel like there's this period where, where like, um, your brain literally decouples the love you had for that person. You know, like, um, at a certain oh, yeah. point, you 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 accept that things are the way they are, and then like, I don't know, like. At some point, I had these dreams, uh, and and then I feel like that was literally m me decoupling the emotion that I had for her. You know, because that that's what dreams are. It, it like they make like whatever I dream about, it makes me more emotionally um, uh, secure about it. Huh. I feel like that's the wow. thing. Dreams decouple your emotions from situations so that you can look at it more objectively. It amplified mine. Huh? It, like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, y'all should know what I'm talking about. I mean, like, when I lived with y'all, y'all heard about my situation. Like, that fucked me up pretty bad. Like, y'all yeah. know I'd be up, like, three or four days straight. <laughs> no sleep whatsoever. Because I just didn't, we I did all not want to go to bed what are you whatsoever. Talking about? <laughs> yeah. Well, Ian, I know, yeah. I know your sleep schedule was kind of retarded. <laughs> it's... We're up for three or four days straight, and you didn't let me use the bed. Damn, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I never said no. I don't know why you just didn't. Dude, Tessa was probably in sleeping in it, dude. Dude, it was well, Tessa or Mike to, or me. Uh, 
was prior to Tessa being there, I think. Yeah. It was before that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just because I wanted to avoid those types of dreams, just because, like, it amplified the feelings instead of just making me more uh, comfortable with it. It just made it worse. So I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to bed. And then David would just get up at some odd hour of the night and I'd be in the kitchen with a cup of coffee. Hey, David. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, hey, Mike, yeah. I'm just going to make some chocolate rice. He's like, what, he's, like, he's like, what are you doing? He's still up. I'm like, just having a cup of coffee. Three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm having those kinds of dreams definitely triggers, you know, like, but I feel like that, that gives you the sort of stage to, to like, um, have your battle that, that like sets the stage and then you can deal with it from there. Like if, if you just avoid it, then you're not dealing with the problem. Well, I had no way to deal with the problem. I was blocked on everything. Yeah. Yo, no closure, huh? None. Yeah, we had our I'm ways. sorry about that. Ways with Drinking and smoking and you could zeller. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, exactly. <laughs> you could zeller be like, "Hey, I'm I'm really sorry. I hope you're okay. Have a good day." I'm not sending her a fucking dime. Penny, <laughs> I'm sending her shit. <laughs> I got robbed. I got really robbed. I'm not gonna no. Oh, never mind. You have your closure. Like. <laughs> Uh, I got I got fucking robbed. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> if she wanted to really fucking talk, she'd unblock me. Mm -hmm. But the time has passed. Ugh. Ugh. Shields up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ask why I'm still single. Because <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Trust <laughs> issues. Not, it's like I, do, I pull like an Obi Wan on everybody. It's like this is not the boyfriend you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just oh, phase that's... out from existence. Date a man. <laughs> I'll date you, Ian. Dang it! Oh, <laughs> man. Of course you'd say Ian first. Ugh. Got my trophy. Where's well, actually, no. Ian's taken. Never mind, David. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, David. Yes, you and me, man. I already. Uh, uh, David's I was already mine. Say, dude. I have his trophy. It's. It says, um. You have my shoe trophy. Yeah, <laughs> it says David. D David defeats diabetes. <laughs> Yo, that doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> David defeats diabetes. It's my trophy. It's... <laughs> Ooh. I, I I burnt it because I tried to burn a, a an incense on it, and I'm really sorry. That's pretty sorry. swag. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, that is my my David symbol. David right. turned into a symbol. Is David like the new prince or what? <laughs> I just I just phase out. I'm just like a. Um, David uh, is David is an abstract concept. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> I okay. I can only of... think. <laughs> I can only think of the group chat. <laughs> David's not human. He's diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So we were <laughs> uh, different. My girlfriend got mad at me because she said she said she said the exact same thing, but it's the way I said it. <laughs> All right. Like, um, we were talking about how, yeah, no, she didn't get mad at me. She got insecure. I was talking, <laughs> so we were talking about how Amber Heard and Johnny Depp are just people. And then it was, uh, but not Amber Heard because, uh, she's, uh, diagnosed. Um, and then, and then you said, that's like saying David's not a human because he's diabetic. And I said, David isn't a human. He's I diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's shit. Yeah, that's I, that. I laughed. I laughed out loud. So, like, I was, I was dying when I heard that. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh it's true. It's true. I flex differently than you. 
right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so fucking funny. Oh. Where's your continuous glucose monitor, bro? That's kind of cringe. No cap. <laughs> so that's well, really appendix, funny, David. <laughs> you have an appendix? I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm messing with my cat and, and I'm like, ah, no balls. <laughs> I don't do that, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> make, make yourself feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I don't. My. Did you have balls? Yeah, my <laughs> my right one uh hurts more than my left one. Do you guys get that? It hurts. Yeah. Are you okay? Well, like on a. Are you all right? A scale of one to ten. Um, it's at like a a one. Like if I think about it, I feel it. Stop! 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 Ian. Why does your ball hurt? <laughs> I this, no lumps, uh, no lumps. <laughs> it's just okay. But it's in what, the tube. Is it just sore? Ian, 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 <laughs> Ian, 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 Ian. Are you are you being denied sexual intercourse? No. Okay. <laughs> like like that's like that's the. <laughs> yeah. So why does it just hurt then? What? That's just... He's just carrying around all this testosterone. <laughs> like, it's just so heavy. Like, not, like I'm thinking <laughs> about sore. it now, and I'm feeling it more, you know? I, I think it's because I'm... Cause my, my, okay, so... My, my thighs have been growing to unreasonably large levels. I look like fucking Mewtwo, right? And, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I feel like... I, I haven't bought any pants and all my pants are just squeezing right i feel like i'm suffocating my maybe i'm suffocating my nutsack yeah no i'm gonna i'm gonna wear those uh xxl basketball shorts that all the smash players wear bingo mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and my... don't forget not to wash your nuts afterwards too <laughs> like, we can just wear that pink weeks. dress again <laughs> did anyone take a video of that? I have. You a did? Video of it. Please send it. I have a video of it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like oh. I have a video in that dress. Eating, oh my god. Uh, a raw onion. <laughs> Cutting a raw onion? Yeah, you have yeah. another video, right? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, I said the N word. <laughs> Remember? No, no, I don't think I have that video. Who has that video? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't have it. I was very into that, and I didn't. Okay, I wore this like pink nightgown, and I I went commando, and and then <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Yeah, I can remember. It's in my camera roll. Oh my god! And I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a moment! Did you see that? I was such you see a that fucking outline? weirdo, dude. <laughs> You'd see my outline, and I'm cooking noodles or some shit. I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" I remember you brought a little, fucking girl a over, and I was wearing that wiener imprint in the nightgown. <laughs> yeah, dude, you brought a girl over, and I was wearing that. I probably like. I know, I know you didn't get any that night, and that was probably my fault. I probably fucking turned her off, dude. Like, not gonna lie. Deactivated. <laughs> I deactivated the, the female, female pheromones with how absolutely stupid my outfit was. <laughs> Look at him. He's thinking back. He's thinking. He's recalling. I, I mean... <clears throat> or maybe it was the fact that I was downstairs on an air mattress in the living room. That was the only place you had. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't recall. You don't? No, I don't think you, I don't think you were wearing that. I was. I was, Mike. You were, I, I don't, I don't know. I cooked you guys noodles, I think. <laughs> I was no, wearing actually, noodles. I didn't make us noodles that night. I didn't? You did not make us noodles that night. What, what did I do? 
Uh, I just think you were vibing. I don't think you were really doing anything. Just walking around the house. <laughs> make it. Make it. Well, it's naked if you saw was, me from underneath. <laughs> I, was, I do remember I was extremely inebriated, though. Were you? I was really, I was really high. Oh damn! Yeah, I was really boss. fucking high. Yeah, <laughs> I was really high. I thought you were gonna say drunk. I wasn't drunk, but I was really fucking. I was really high though. All right, what? Uh. What? I don't know. I just thought it would look funny. Like, I don't know. Right. We sock. Anyway, you were saying. It? Uh, we're we're gonna end this off on the on the sock bit sock bit. Well, this has been the Kiwi Hour, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, David's dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the incorporeal spirit of David. A sock on an arm. Um, take the sock off because it's painfully unfunny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys too. I'll see you later. All right. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.